Welcome back to the Soda Solar channel. Uh, today I thought we'd talk about higher voltage, higher DC voltage systems. Uh, we just finished up the Grand Design Solitude that was 24 volt and we've had some questions and definitely seen a lot of interest in it and thought we'd go over some things. So there are a number of reasons why you would want to go with a higher DC voltage on your RV solar system. Uh, some of which are really obvious like less wire. Uh, cheaper wire. I don't know how well you can see this here, but uh, the right here this is 2 watt wire or 2 o wire, and this is uh, 4 o. Typically, we use 4 o for 12 volt systems, uh, 2 o for 24 volt systems, and then we'll use 2 gauge, which is even smaller than this, which I should have brought some out, for 48 volt systems <clears throat> as the primary. Now, it all depends on the watts that the device is requiring, like a 48 volt quattro is still going to get 2 watt wire because it can pull that many amps. And we're always, whenever possible, we are in favor of sizing up wire. It's cheap, relatively speaking, wire's cheap, um, don't skimp on that. Uh, probably more important than that is cooler connections. Because there's less amps, and this is going to be a constant theme, because there's less amps, the connections stay cooler. I should have planned this out a little bit better. Uh, but here's a typical 300 amp capable breaker. This is a 600 amp capable, not breaker, disconnect. We would typically use a disconnect like this, a 600 amp capable on a 12 volt system because we want that overhead. And the connections can tend to run a little bit hotter, specifically when you're running higher amp loads. Uh, typically, um, really this is about air conditioning and we'll get into that later but if you're trying to run your air conditioner on a 12 volt system everything's going to run hot even these 4 watt cables are going to get warm I don't care what anybody says we've done a ton of them uh, done terminal grease done everything there's just a lot of amps flowing through here and then the other thing is increased efficiency in your inverters as well uh, on the 12 volt this is from Victron. On a 12 volt system, you're getting about 93% efficiency. 24 volt, it goes up just a little bit more to 94%. And a 48 volt, up to about 95% efficiency, which isn't a huge deal, but every little bit counts when you're talking about off-grid power. So the, the way I look at it, these are all bonus, kind of bonus ads. These aren't even the real main reasons why you'd want to go to a higher voltage system. Uh, I would say where you really start saving a lot of money is when we're talking about solar charge controllers. We see these a lot. These, this is a 50 amp charge controller. I've also got a 70 amp. And then here, this is a 100 amp. And you can see the difference between these two. And believe it or not, uh, on a 24 volt system, this one right here will provide just as much power as this one will, when we're talking about capturing watts from the solar panels. And watts ultimately is what's important. Some people get hung up on amps like, oh, let's run at 12 volts because we get more amps. Well, it's amps times volts equals watts, and that watts is what actually does the work. And as you'd imagine, uh, this solar charger right here is a lot cheaper than this one is. Uh, actually, Two 50 amp chargers are cheaper than one 100 amp charger typically. So a lot of times you can get away with just one of these where you where in a 12 volt system you'd need two of these or one of these big guys. So you save money and space. And then when you start adding even more stuff, you can start saving money on your Lynx distributors because you only got four outputs on that or four inputs, outputs, whatever you want to call them. So you can really start to save money. And at a minimum, I did some figuring here on a 1600 watt solar system with about 400 amp hours of battery. And for the sake of argument, we're doing the 400 amp hours in 12 volt world. In 24 volt, that amp hours is cut in half, 48 volt cut by a fourth, but go with me here. That 1600 watt system on 24 volt is $500 cheaper in parts alone. I figured in wire, I figured in uh, the solar chargers, everything like that. Um, and there's probably a question you have about running these higher voltage systems that we're going to get to later, and it also is covered uh, in that $500 estimate. I got a 
there's a mosquito in here. So the next question you might have is, okay, uh, should I have a 24 or 48 volt system versus a 12 volt system? How do I know if it makes sense to do that? Um, in general, I would say when you start needing at least more than one of these controllers, solar chargers, you really need to start thinking about it because your solar system is getting big enough to where you're gonna start taking advantage of those efficiencies. Below that, it's not really a big deal. Uh, you're not really saving much one way or the other and just adding a little bit more complexity that you're not really getting any advantages out of. I would say another big one is when you're thinking about running your air conditioner more than 30 to 60 minutes at a time. Again, these high amps, uh, you know, running an air conditioner, you're looking at somewhere between 100 to 150 amps, depending on what else you're running. And I know all this stuff is capable of way more than that. We've just seen it in experience. Sometimes switches melt because they're not perfectly manufactured. Sometimes just things just get warm and they don't need to. It just, you're pushing a 12 volt system to its absolute limit when you try and pull that many amps for that long. Now, there's no problem with running a microwave off of a 12 volt system. You know, that may use more than an air conditioner, but it's just for a couple of minutes at a time or other intermittent loads. But when you start pulling that many amps for hours on end, just step up your voltage. Everything's gonna be happier. Another kind of edge case when you might wanna step up, it might just be a no brainer. And this is what my situation was is our MCI bus is a 24 volt system by default. So that means the alternator was already at 24 volts and that's why I chose it. It was just seemed like, why would I throw away an alternator that puts out 270 amps at 24 volts? Keep in mind, if you're thinking about 12 volts, that's over 500 amps. Why would I you know, throw that charging capability away? So that's kind of what led me down that road. So if you also have a you know, some kind of overlanding vehicle or a, uh, a bus of some kind that already has a alternator with a higher voltage, that may be a good reason to do it as well. And if you do have a vehicle that you would like alternator charging, there are ways to step up your 12 volt to a higher voltage, or you can install a higher voltage alternator in that vehicle as well. I'm sure there's at least one of you watching this that is screaming or, or wanting to type why are you even talking about 24 volts? It should be 48. 48 volts is the way to go. 24 is just the stepping stone to 48. And for the most part, I would say you're right, except in this case. Right now, the biggest reason to stick with a 24 volt system is Victron only manufactures a multi-plus inverter in 12 and 24 volts. That is the two by 120 model. And this means you can still have the advantages of a full 50 amp uh, hookup when you're on shore power, but then when you're inverting power, the inverter automatically connects your two hot legs together to make your breaker box work. So all your outlets work, everything just works. And then with two inverters, you can stack them together, or I shouldn't say stack, you can parallel them together. And that means you can still run two air conditioners, you can still run everything, because you basically have 6,000 VA of inverting power at your disposal across your entire panel. The only downside to that is you can't run any 240 volt appliances. If you want to do that, that leads us to the next thing, which is if you're going to end up running two inverters and you want to run something like 48 volts where it doesn't have that two by 120, you're going to need it to add a, another component called an auto transformer, which we have installed those before. We do have some videos on that. And what that will do is it will balance both of the inverters to give you true, uh, well, yeah, balanced inverting. Whereas when you run two of the two by 120s, like in that grand design project we just did, they're automatically balanced. It's just simpler, works a little bit easier. Once Victron starts creating a 48 volt, which I have no reason to believe that they wouldn't, but I haven't heard one way or the other. It seems like a logical step to me that then I think that'll become more of an option, but I think that two by 120 is just such a good inverter. It's hard to, it's hard to not go that way. Now you might be saying, uh, this all sounds well and good. You've convinced me, but what about all my RV electronics? 
Uh, my lights aren't 48 volt, or they're not 24 volt. Um, nothing else is. What, what am I going to do about that? Well, there's an Orion step down transformer that goes from 24 to 12 volts that I really like. It's 70 amps, and I want to say it's about 140 bucks. That powers everything in that Grand Design Solitude we just did, and it works great. Uh, I would say I kind of feel like that's an advantage again on the 24 volt side on the 48 volt side I don't think Victron has anything that is that big. You got to stack a couple of 30 amp ones together if you want more uh, Step down capacity. The other thing you can do is put a little 12 volt battery to handle some of those surge loads So the other thing to keep in mind if you're going to be running a higher voltage system I really would recommend sticking with a all-in-one battery that handles the voltage that you want to run at. Don't be stacking 12 volt batteries into 24 or 48 volts. They will get out of balance. I've seen it so many times and it can, best case scenario, you, you don't have the capacity you think you have. Worst case scenario, you can start damaging batteries because the BMS is shut off at different times and you end up with like, half a battery or two thirds of a battery, not two thirds, but one fourth or you know what I mean. So the big question here is what's right for you? And really, ultimately that's up to you. And don't let anyone tell you that, you know, you're wrong for going one way or another. You have your own reasons for that. If 12 volt just makes sense to you, that's fine. That's totally fine. We will help you. Uh, I hope anyone else would also help you. Uh, but I would also say, and maybe encourage you, to explore the higher voltages a little bit. Uh, don't be afraid of them. In all reality, they are safer. There's a reason why all of our household power is at a higher voltage. It all runs at 120 or higher. It's because it's a safe way to transmit higher, higher power. Same thing is true with our DC loads. I mean, most electric cars, I think, run at 400 plus volts. Uh, there just won't be any other way to do it. So. Uh, I think I've been rambling enough there. Uh, I hope some of this made sense. If not, I appreciate you watching this long. Uh, leave your comments down below. I hope to do more of these little talks and just kind of what's on my mind discussions. Uh, so yeah, leave comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, thanks for hanging out, and we will see you next time.